Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about indigestion or low stomach acid, commonly known as hypochlorhydria. What is it? What are some of the clinical signs and symptoms? What are some lab markers that we can look at to determine if we have low stomach acid issues? So let's get right into it. So hypochlorhydria means low stomach acid and is the major cause of indigestion. Antacids lower stomach acid so it can create hypochlorhydria. Age. As we get older, we produce less hormones as well as less stomach acid. So as we get older, we have difficulty processing proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Poor diet. The standard American diet has a lot of processed foods, uh, processed meats, uh, and so forth. So the poor diet can also affect digestion. People have food allergies they don't understand that they have. So uh, things with dairy or gluten or some other uh, nuts or seeds can create some problems with hypochlorhydria. H. pylori infection. The Helicobacter pylori infection uh, likes a more basic environment and can make your stomach a little bit more basic and reduce stomach acid. So if you have an H. pylori infection, you can also have symptoms of indigestion. Now, so what are some of the signs and symptoms, right? Gas, bloating shortly after meals, very common. Sense of fullness. You only ate a little bit, but I feel full. I just don't feel like it's digesting very well. Nausea after taking supplements. You're not processing it very well, right? Weak peeling or cracked nails. That's really due to um, malnutrition. If you have low stomach acid, you're not breaking down your foods appropriately and, and assimilating those nutrients appropriately. So you can see it in like brittle hair, or brittle nails, right? Um, another is dilated capillaries in the cheeks and the nose area. Allergies. People don't realize that if you have low stomach acid, you're going to be more susceptible for allergies because um, when you take in foods, you're going to get more of these larger dietary proteins circulating and it creates an inflammatory response. In that respect, if you're exposed to more allergens from the outside, your cup is already full, right? It's already trying to process all this stuff. Uh, and has an inflammatory load, and then you add in pollen or cats or dogs, and you're going to have more allergies, okay? So what are some of the lab markers that we can look at? <clears throat> For low stomach acid, we look at a few different markers, and you can find these in your common uh, blood test, right? Your CBC along with your chem screens. So lab markers, right? What you're going to see is an increase in BUN, right? Bunurea nitrogen, between 10 and 16 is normal or optimal. Anything uh, above that can indicate you have hypochlorhydria. Globulin, which is a protein, can either be high or low depending on the cause of the hypochlorhydria. But you're looking at greater than 2.8 or less than 2.4. Decrease in total protein. Decrease in albumin, which is another protein. So you see the common theme, right? Protein. You're not breaking down your proteins because you don't have enough stomach acid. A decrease in phosphorus, less than three, can be an indication of hypochlorhydria. <clears throat> when we come to chronic, let's say, hypochlorhydria, low stomach acid issues, you're going to start to see changes in red blood cells. MCV can be elevated. MCV is basically the size of your red blood cell. It's indicating that you're not utilizing uh, your B vitamins appropriately and your red blood cells are getting larger to carry more oxygen. So MCV elevation, anything above 92, 93, you're looking at some problems there. MCHC, which is another marker for red blood cells, decrease in calcium, decrease in iron below 50, not iron deficiency anemia, but subtle signs of deficiency. So when you look at it below 50, you go, hmm, maybe they're not absorbing the nutrients the way they should be. Decrease in chloride, now hydrochloric acid, that's the chloride. If you see it below 100, there can be an indication of low stomach acid issues also. And alkaline phosphatase. Now these are common markers. Now I have a whole series on gastrointestinal disorders that goes more in depth into this. There's three parts to that. And I also did one on um, 
allergies. Uh, I react to everything. And that's about dendritic cells of the stomach and so forth. So it gets a little bit more complicated than what I'm talking about today. But go ahead and watch some of those other videos. But today's video is just about what markers can we look at? What are some of the signs and symptoms? And how can we address it, right? You can address it by one, eliminating those foods that cause problems for you. Two, supplementing with HCL or betaine hydrochloric acid with digestive enzyme and maybe gallbladder support. Um, the other thing is overuse of antacids. Oftentimes people are taking too many antacids for too many years and it's suppressing their stomach acid production. When patients come in and they have indigestion or stomach um, bloating and so forth, oftentimes it's the result of low stomach acid, not too much. So low stomach acid will create an environment where you cannot digest your foods appropriately and it creates uh, fermentation of the food and just sits there and creates an acidic environment because of food fermentation, not because of too much acid production. Now, antacids will suppress some of that food fermentation gas or acidity, but it's really not correcting the underlying mechanism because for the most part, most patients have issues with low stomach acid causing reflux signs, not too much. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but you got to look at that. So um, in order to understand uh, hydrochloric acid and stomach function and so forth, you need to kind of watch some of my other videos. But this is a quick synopsis. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, look at your old blood work. Pull it out. Take a look. See if you fit into this mold. Okay. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.